my lovely, lovely imps, it's time for us to do something special, something we haven't done in a while, something that only true Demon Mama fans appreciate, only people who are in the know. And the reason why they're in the know is because they're brave enough to journey with me into the land of bad cooking. That's right. That's right. It's time for Cooking Mama. It has been way too long since we last did an episode of Cooking Mama. And I was inspired by the cook by the impromptu Cooking Mama segment that I got to do with the deep fat fried guys. So now I wish for you to join me as we embark on a journey of discovering the most foul, heinous, evil, dastardly, twisted, perverse, penumbral cooking on this side of the world and beyond. We have a lot, a lot, lot, lot of cooking that we haven't caught up with, okay? And I need us to go through them because it's been too long. And you guys, you true Demon Mama fans, you all know how much fun we have if we can be brave enough. And of course, our first entry of the night is a submission from a classic cooking channel that we've revisited many, many times, which is, of course, Dave's cooking show. Now, this is a bit of an older video. This is from three months ago, which tells you just how much we've missed. But Dave's cooking made a Jessica Biel penne. And I have been told that it's something special. I have not seen this, so I don't know if it's going to be special or if it's going to be normal. But I say, let's find out. Welcome to Dave's Cooking Show, and it's time for another tale of when I was Dave, chef to the stars. And this is the time that Jessica Biel came into my humble little establishment, begging and pleading for a penne she would never forget. So I said, okay. First thing we... <laughs> I, I totally thought he was going to... I saw the paper, and there was just long enough of a delay there. Then I was like, no, Dave, don't forget the paper. So I said, okay. First thing we do is we start off by cooking up two pounds of mild Italian sausage. Okay. All right. Okay. As you can see here, the sausage is done. So time to drain off the excess fat and then return the pot to the <gasps> he's draining it off wait a second that's a good start the last few times he hasn't drained off the excess fat the last like six times we've watched him make a pasta he's just put it in with the sauce and it, there's like a layer of of grease on top he's doing it uh burner all right see you at the next step okay as you can see here we have the um uh... Sausage all drained. Now let's add that back into the Sausage. mix. And now we're gonna add two cans of San Marzano tomatoes uh, that I basically pureed up in my blender here. That is two 28 ounce cans of San Marzano tomatoes. And you wanna give that a good little mix up there. I mean, okay. I mean, he's pureeing things. Now, I... All right, let's give him time. Let's, let's give him time. This is, this is evolution so far. I don't want to judge. I don't want to... I don't want to assume the worst. Let's see where he goes. Just stir it around, make sure everything's mixed. And then you want to add a half a teaspoon of fennel and okay. a quarter teaspoon of ground sage. 
Now, ordinarily, okay. Uh, okay. I would add garlic, but Miss Beale started screaming like a lunatic, demanding that I don't. So, even though this recipe didn't have any garlic in it, it still turned out fantastic. Ooh, skipping the... Why did he skip the garlic? Did he forget to pick it up at the store? Hmm. And lastly, salt and pepper to taste. You also want to add just a pinch of sugar. Not for any flavoring purposes, but to just kind of take the tinniness of the can away. The can? The can of, of the San Marzano's? Don't they? Wait, okay. hold on. Don't those usually come in a gl in a jar? Oh, I guess they do sometimes come in a can. I always thought those came in a glass jar, but I guess they do come in a can. Okay. I do think it's a little weird, but all right. Okay. All right. All so. Right. That's uh, pretty much really it. I think uh, I'm thinking of something else. I don't know why I was thinking of them coming in a glass jar. I'm thinking of something else, I think. I think I'm thinking of the um, like the sun-dried tomatoes and oil and not San Marzano's is what, the, is what I get in my mind. Um, simmer this for at least 15, 20 okay, minutes. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest. So far, this is just a huge improvement from his past. This is just a step up. He's just doing better. Or so. Uh now there is still two minutes left. Um, and then you also want to start uh, getting the penne water uh, boiling. And of course, salt the water. You want pasta water to be as salty as the sea. And then again, take a minute off of the minimum cook time. And that's really all you do with the pasta. And just make sure you taste this throughout the cooking process to adjust any and all seasonings uh, to taste. One last thing, this is optional, but you want to make sure you add a bay leaf. Because, okay. you know, they taste like bay leaves. Anyway, just make sure you uh, remove it about five minutes before you uh, uh, kill the heat with the sauce. Okay, as you can see. I do think it's kind of funny to just kind of plop the bay leaf on top. Like, that is a little funny to me, to just kind of like put it on top. But but I'll be honest, so far, this is just fine. I mean, obviously, he still has the problem of like, what the fuck? There's like a, what appears to be a, like an eyelash or an eyebrow hair over here. There's some unknown stains on his countertop, which I don't know why he doesn't just wipe down the countertop before he shoots his co his cooking videos. His commentary sucks. He makes weird, incomprehensible jokes about female celebrities. I don't get it. But so far, this is one of his like more competent dishes. He's done nothing so far that is like out of the ordinary. It seems very basic, but he also used seasoning. He put fennel, bay leaf, uh, I think he said sage in there, which is like, he's actually using seasoning. That's kind of, that's kind of impressive. See, we got our pasta cooked al dente. Nice little penne there. And I decided to do it a little differently. I didn't put the pasta with the sauce. I decided this time just to serve the sauce on top of the pasta. Well, that's a good idea because that's a better way to do it most of the time. Unless you're going to eat all the pasta in a single set, serve in like a single sitting. And even if you are, unless you're literally going to serve it all right then, you don't want to mix those two together in advance. You. Yeah, but hey, are we doing Cooking Mama? Yeah, we're doing Cooking Mama. And so far, I'm Im I'm impressed. For whatever reason, that's what Miss Beale demanded. 
And then just to finish this off, a little bit of freshly ground Parmesan cheese and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Fresh Parmesan? What? What happened? What's happened? And that is Jessica Beals Penne. Who lied to me? Done. Somebody told me this was atrocious. This was not atrocious. This was not atrocious at all. In fact, this is just fine. It's basic, but it has seasoning, which is rare for Dave. Is he getting better? Slowly and surely? Hold on. Hold on. We have to confirm. Okay. Oh boy. Oh. Oh boy. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold the fort. He's done a lot. He's done a lot of new episodes since this one. So maybe we should check out one of these and see how he does, okay? Okay, so wait, do we, no, we haven't seen any of these. Damn. He's been he's been churning out these videos. I'm actually kind of impressed. He's been putting out a lot of videos. So there's the Jessica Beale one, and we haven't seen any of these. Cranberry salsa. Oh, that do, that looks a little bit sus, I'm not going to lie. Okay, here's what we're going to do. There was one up here that I needed to see. I need to see. I need to see this one. The sausage. Oh, it's not it's not out yet. That's an up that's an upcoming one. The sausage quiche is not here yet. Okay, so we can't watch that one yet. We can watch the pepperoni pinwheels. We want to see how he handles the pepperoni pinwheels and see if he's improved on pizza. I don't want to spend the whole time doing Dave, but I got to say, that's actually an improvement. It's a big improvement. You want to see the Yorkshire pudding? Okay, let's do Yorkshire pudding because I don't actually know anything about the preparation of a Yorkshire pudding. So this will be unique because I'll just have to decide whether I would actually eat it or not because I don't know anything about the preparation of a Yorkshire pudding. Let's see it. We'll do this one first. Let's do it. Is this, what, wh where did this, is this stolen? He did not make this. Who Are we going to get copyright strike for this? What? Okay, now let's make a Christmas. Bad sign. Unidentifiable blob already on the counter. Sus. Still lots of dirty bits. He never wipes it down. He never puts a cloth over it. But all right. Let's give him a fair... Let's... Bad start, but let's go. from across the pond here on Dave's Cooking Show's Christmas Spectacular. Oh. Ooh. Uh, we're going to make some... York ooh, he's feeling the energy tonight. The Christmas Spectacular. Your puddings. So what you want to do is in a... Uh, bowl or whatever the hell this thing is pitcher uh you want to start off with four large eggs and then you want to add um two cups oh, wow. of milk okay and then you just want to grab a little whisk and whisk this up till okay. both are well combined okay now that they're well combined right, and okay. everything it's time to add the two cups of flour. Now you want to add about a cup of flour at a time. And then you just want to whisk this till everything is smooth. 
<laughs> All right, you're getting in the splash Once zone there just a tiny bit. <laughs> uh, add the All right, other half. I'm trying not. I'm not gonna nitpick. That was very funny to witness of him like blast himself with flour and then he keeps that as the main take but all right i'm not gonna half of the flour and by the way uh at some point you should be starting to preheat your oven to 450 degrees and then you want to uh preheat a uh muffin tin i put my muffin tin okay on a baking so my main concern here is that the way that he's mixing the flour in seems like it's destined to make it very clumpy. And I'm noticing like there's a lot on the sides that gets splashed up. So I feel like this is gonna be a very clumpy dough, but I could be wrong. Cheat. I don't know, maybe this is the way they're done. And you want to uh, add a it looks, teaspoon it, of- It actually, it looks chunky. You can even see it here in the video. There's a lot of chunks in there. I feel like he's gonna really have to whip this stuff to break those chunks up. Vegetable oil to each one of the 12 muffin tins. And you want oh, to get that heated it's up. it's super clumpy. You can actually, as he's stirring it, you can really make so out a lot of clumps in there. So that takes about 10 to you can, 15 minutes. You can literally see them. Before the oil is heated properly. And again, you really do have to kind of move. This is not a dish where you can be lazy about it and you can fuck off and do other things. You got to be uh, in the kitchen with this one. All right, let's show the next step. Okay, my muffin tin is... Have you considered looking at Future Canoe on Cooking Mama? I get it in my recommendations and it's horrendous, but like intentionally so? I hate the intentional stuff. I hate the intentional stuff. This is what I live for right here. I love, look, as much as Dave can be a reprehensible person, he's authentic in a strange way. And I like that. I like, I've, I like seeing him improve. It actually makes me feel great to see him improve. I don't know what this future canoe stuff is, but he isn't intentionally bad. Oh, he's authentic in a depressive way. Hmm. All right. If, if one of you has a video, I'll watch it. You have to, you have to submit the video. And I'll watch it. No, you have to pick one that you think is going to sell me on it. And if it sells me on it, it's great. If not, then Future Canoe's out. Let's do this. Is ready. Uh, and we're going to start pouring the batter in. And you want to fill each one of these to the tippy, tippy top. And I did make oh. one mistake. Um... I should have preheated the muffin tin and then added the oil and then put it in for the 10 minutes to heat the oil, but these turned out all right. Oh, and now these are going to bake for 30 to 35 minutes at 450 degrees. Hey. Okay, and thanks to the magic of cooking show editing, these Yorkshire puddings are done. So I'm not gonna lie, these look pretty good. These may, these look pretty goddamn good. I don't, I still don't understand why he bothers making a cooking show if when he makes a big mistake like that, he doesn't just like redo the shot. You know, like it's not like his episodes are super high intensity editing or anything. He should just retake the shot, but these look fine. These look good, in fact. The dough did seem a little clumpy, so I'm a little worried that the inside might be inconsistently cooked, but they look fine. They look fine. Okay. All right. All right, one more Dave cooking show, okay? I want to see one more. There was another one here that I wanted to watch, okay? And this one... We're gonna see how he handles something well out of his comfort zone. Korean pork chops, okay? This'll be our last day of the night. But I gotta see the Korean pork chops, okay? Let's see it. Korean pork chops, let's do it. Welcome to Dave's Cooking Show, and for you today, we have Korean pork chops. All right, to a bowl, I've added one tablespoon of olive oil, 
Okay. And then you want a quarter cup of soy sauce. Put that in there. Okay. And then you want to add about two tablespoons of honey. Okay. All right. A little sweetness in our marinade. And you want four cloves of minced garlic. All right. And a teaspoon of sesame oil. And of all the things to use a measuring spoon on, this would be the one. This crap is potent and will easily overpower. <laughs> he says as he immediately ignores his own... As he ignores his own advice. Dude, do a second take. Come on. <laughs> He literally is dripping it over the thing and then puts extra in afterwards. Okay, whatever. Power your dish. All the things to you and a teaspoon of sesame oil. And of all the things Ooh. to use Ooh. a measuring Sher spoon on, this would be the one. This crap is potent and will easily overpower your dish. All right. And then you want about a half a teaspoon of ginger powder, or if you want to go the extra step, a teaspoon of minced fresh ginger. Uh, I was going to do that, but huh. I forgot to buy it, so screw it. I just went with the spice. Now, you want two teaspoons of red chili garlic paste. You can find this in the Asian section of your local supermarket. So, I just wanted to make sure, but we're running into the problem that we had with Jack, where this is a this is a, a Chinese sauce. The Li Kum Ki ch chili sauce is a Hong Kong style chili sauce. So, I'm not saying that it's not like similar or that you couldn't create a similar thing, but I wonder why. All right, let's continue. Now, you want to grab a whisk and whisk all this stuff together. And once you've got it all mixed together, I've got about six pork chops here. And again, you just want to pour the marinade into a bag. Well, it's not so much about it being authentic, you know, like obviously if you're if you're like trying out a Korean recipe and you're like an American from the Midwest or whatever, you know, you're not going to make an authentic dish. It's not really about that. I just wonder why there's this phenomenon where a lot of people, they'll call it a Korean dish. And then I go like, why is this why is this a Korean pork chop? Because it doesn't. It has a Chinese chili paste sauce, and that's the, the and then sesame oil and then uh, uh, soy sauce, and it's just like what make why why is it the Korean pork chop? Like what what compelled you to call it the Korean pork chops? You know, I, I don't know. I just I always wonder. Uh, when you close it up, try to get as much air out as possible. Move the pork chops around, and make sure they're. Uh coated with that marinade and then you want to marinate this for about uh 20 minutes uh it's just because of some did he, he didn't put ginger in it did he it was garlic wasn't it i don't think he said ginger did he say ginger garlic, oh, garlic. he didn't put any ginger in there that's the easiest way I find to make sure everything gets evenly coated in the marinade. All right, see everyone in 20 minutes. Okay, now we got a thing of oil, some olive oil. It's just about to start to smoke, and we want to lay our pork chops in. And basically, you want to sear them uh, for about five minutes a side or so. And then you want to give them a little flipsy. 
and get the other side all good and wonderful. And after that five Oh, I must have missed that. I'm sorry. Okay, so we did put ginger. Then it's in basically there. you want to reflip them, pour the marinade back in, and then cook them for about another five minutes. Okay. People have said, yeah, that there's a lot of like overlapping ingredients between, you know, various uh Chinese, Japanese, Korean cuisine. Obviously, there's a lot of cultural dialogue and back and forth, you know, in the cuisine. But there's there are distinct, very distinct characteristics of Chinese, Korean and Japanese cuisine. And if you're going to call it Korean pork chops, I feel like there would have there would be like something that makes them Korean as opposed to something that makes it like especially if you're using a Chinese brand as your chili pepper and it's just red chili paste. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like the biggest thing in the world, but I just wonder what, where, where that comes from. Because we saw Jack do this too, where, uh, where, where Jack used only like basically no, almost no ch like ingredients that were like distinctly Korean at all. And the only, I like, like, ingredient that was highly associated with a national cuisine that he used was a Chinese pepper paste. It's almost the same thing. I just, I wonder. Anyway, I don't know. Minutes more. Okay, and I decided to come up with a sauce recipe while the rice was simmering. Oh, by the way, you want to make about two cups of rice for this uh, particular dish that we're making. And so I got about a half a cup of uh about a half a cup of mayonnaise and then i added some of the drippings from the uh skillet that uh we cooked the pork chops um. in added that to there uh if i had to guess probably a couple of tablespoons worth again i didn't really measure anything else like i said i was making this up while the rice wait what I lo I'm lo I lost. I'm lost. What is he making here? This was cooking. And then, of course, added a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And just for a little heat in there, I added uh, basically kind of a, about a teaspoon of oh, Frank's? Frank's Red Hot Sauce. <laughs> Frank's! Yeah! Famously Korean Frank's Red Hot Famously Korean craft mayo. Bro, what? And then just grabbed a spoon and mixed it up. All right. Sauce is done. Let's move also, on. Also, keep in mind that is not drippings. That is drippings mixed with marinade. Marin the marinade which raw pork was sitting in. Oh, dude, no. This is a biohazard. assembly okay got our nice plate and ah yuck the plates already got dirty on it to assembly oh oh no there's gunk already on the plate there's a bunch of oh there's brown yellow and unidentifiable gloop already on the plate oh we're back baby this is the day we know maybe this was an older video that he decided to upload more recently oh jesus okay got our nice plate and uh, our bowl, I, sh I should say. And uh, now you want to basically just lay down a bed of white rice. Any white rice will do. That it's white, that white rice looks fucking terrible. That looks like the soggiest rice I've ever seen in my entire life. That looks bad. Long grain white rice, but if you want, you can use basmati or jasmine. Doesn't really matter. And now you want to lay down our pork chop that's been rested and sliced. The pork chop itself doesn't look terrible. Okay. And, and there we got. And now we have the biohazard coming in. Then you want to grab a spoon and lay down some of that sauce we made on the top. Do we have any? Are there are there any Korean viewers watching this right now? Have you ever gone to a Korean restaurant and had? mayo, pork dripping, uh, 
Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Sauce topping like this? Anybody? Is this a is this a Korean dish? Is this even remotely Korean? Cause um, <laughs> Dokai Bling says, "Hell no, <laughs> this isn't even remotely Korean." You know, I j I had a hunch, but you know, I don't want to make I don't want to make presumptions. Okay. Killjoy says, "I was stationed in Korea for a year, and I never saw any of this shit." Dokai Bling says, my grandma is screaming in her grave right now, I swear, I'm so sorry. And that's it. I mean, I've had a lot of Korean food in my life. I love Korean food, uh, but it's American Korean food. You know, I've never been to Korea, so I don't know. I don't want to be presumptuous, you know. Korean pork chops. I don't know about that, dude. I'm not going to lie. Having a buffalo chicken... A buffalo chicken dripping sauce made with mayo, to me, just seems a bit out of the... Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This just seems a bit... A bit off, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. The mayo plus quote-unquote drippings could make a really good sauce if it wasn't the tainted marinade and the drippings were cooled enough not to destroy the mayo, but it was still hot when he poured it in. Yeah, it was looking a bit chunky there. I'm, I'm very surprised by this, okay? Yeah. This is definitely a return to form. So we got two decent Dave videos and then we got one that really resembles... The old Dave days. All right, but we have something new to try, everybody. It's time to move on from Dave, okay? It's time to move on from Dave. Because we got to try something new. This is a recommendation of a channel called Future Canoe. Future Canoe. I've never seen this channel. I do not know what to expect. But I have now had viewers recommend me this video. And this video is five viral mozzarella recipes. Five viral mozzarella recipes. So let's Remember check how it we out. Tried to All right, let's check it out. Make mozzarella and it failed miserably. Well, it made me appreciate the craftsmanship of the cheese more. So today we're gonna test out some of the most viral fresh mozzarella recipes on the internet. Starting with this lady's Italian sandwich with 30 million views. Why don't we remove the guts just so we can fit more inside? Perfect. So it's basically a Capri sandwich with pesto and prosciutto inside. And I know you guys been accusing me of purposely picking the worst ingredients. I literally just bought these tomatoes today. Ew. What the? Come on guys, it's not my fault this time. So to start, we'll take a piece of bread with a fairly hard crust. Slice it in half so we can start digging all the guts out. We're gonna save it, bake it at a low temperature in the oven, blend it up, and turn it into breadcrumbs with pesto and prosciutto. Okay, but her bread looks like a... like a... like a really crispy baguette or something that's been toasted. Whereas this is like... this looks like, uh, like a ciabatta or something? I don't know. Comments. I'm just gonna throw it away. So with the bread as gutless as me, we can start stuffing it. First, we'll do a layer of mozzarella. Then remove any moldy part on the tomato. Give it a sniff. Woo! We'll layer the slices in. What? No. Okay. I understand the desire to, like, use food that you think is not but a tomato that's gone moldy you don't want that okay you don't want to eat that okay that tomato is rotting if it's got mold th the beginning of this had gigantic clump of mold that is it is caving in on itself with mold the spores are going to be all throughout that you do not want to eat that that is not that is that is that is gone too far okay there are some things that you can like reasonably like cut mold off of okay like for example there are certain types of cheese that if there's a little bit of mold on there you can cut the cheese off cut the piece off of the cheese and you're going to be okay it's fucking cheese that's like moldy cheese will not kill you you want to be careful because if it's covered in mold 
might not be very healthy for you and certainly might not taste good. But if you've got like a little bit of mold on an exposed part of a piece of cheese, you're probably gonna be fine. But a tomato, these tomatoes, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. The inside of these tomatoes looks putrefied and that is disgusting. A small bit of mold could make you sick. This much rotting will fucking destroy you. Yeah, these look rotten and putrefied. This looks terrible. I, I am already horrified by this individual. 519,000 views. I am confused. All right, let's continue. Layer the slices in and top it off with some olive oil. The recipe also calls for some fresh grated garlic. That's Look at this. This is like, it's, it's gelatinous. That's disgusting, dude. This is disgusting. Look at these. These look fucked up. Th that doesn't look like the, the wateriness of a fucking tomato. That looks like putrefied flesh that's goopy and bacterial. What I'm doing here. A layer of prosciutto. Why is it all cut up like that? A final layer of cheese. More Why is it all cut up like What do you mean by that? What does that mean? Here. Prosciutto is thin sliced. A layer of prosciutto. Why is it all cut up like that? A final layer of cheese, more olive oil, into the oven at 375 for- Okay, there is so much olive oil on this already. This is ridiculously oily. Okay, this is going to be a wet mess when he's done with it. The moisture from the, the rotten tomatoes, the insane amount of oil, the moisture from the mozzarella. This is going to be a slop. I'm calling it right now, slop. Or maybe eight to 10 minutes, whenever you feel like it's done. And we're gonna bake the lid as well. We're gonna spread some olive oil on the surface. Again, with the fresh grated garlic. Put it right next to the sandwich, but you're gonna take the lid out Wait before the sandwich. That is not with the fresh, fresh grated, grated garlic. garlic. Oh, he's just lying. So he's being ironic. I hate this. Okay, so this guy's a fucking fraud, right? I got mixed messages. Some of you said this guy isn't being intentionally annoying, but this guy is giving me the I'm trying to trigger you type thing. Take the lid it's as well. It's literally oh, very obviously not fresh. Surface. Again with the fresh grated garlic. Fresh grated garlic, and he's using a, an obvious like shitty uh, garlic salt. Oh, that's so, I hate that shit. That's so, that doesn't, it's not funny, okay? Put it right next to the sandwich, but you're gonna take the lid out before the sandwich though. After 10 minutes, this is what it looks like. All crispy and stuff. The final step is to top it off with a big- He's a comedy channel? He should try being funny. Scoop of pesto. Again, I just bought this today. I don't know why it's brown like that. But check out this crunchiness. Kinda looks like an ancient monument. That. But check out this crunchiness. Kinda looks like an ancient monument. My love language is cutting diagonally when making a sandwich. It makes it taste so much better. Let's take a look at the cross section. I feel like after removing the guts, everything is much more in place. Nothing's falling out like that, which is my biggest problem with sandwiches. And also, is this the first cheese pull on this channel? Nice job, team. Finally, let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. If a dish is consisting of 20% or less meat, it's pretty much vegetarian. And Okay, the mozzarella isn't even melted, which is crazy. The edges of the mozzarella are obviously melted, but you can actually see that the mozzarella in the center is still solid, which is a massive fail. This is rage bait. I hate this If shit, a dish so is consisting so of 20% or less meat, it's pretty much vegetarian. And if the animal product is not butter, it's pretty much vegan. So this is the best vegan sandwich I've ever had. Test the definition of sound logic. I feel like the beauty of Italian cuisine is that all of those components taste good on their own. So you can match them up however you want. I'll give this an 8.6 out of 10. Perfect for lunch. This recipe is super viral and extremely easy. I'll play the video for you real quick. All right. I'm going to be completely honest so far. This is just embarrassing rage bait. There's something there's something about it. Okay, there's like a type of content out there that that I think just I don't know who it appeals to. It's like 
the type of person who holds this thing up and goes, I'm just drinking some water from my bowl, guys. I love bowls. Mmm, water from a bowl. Water from a, a bowl. It's a bowl. I love water from a bowl. Anyway, guys, hold on. I gotta take a call on my banana. Okay. Unfortunately, I had to go to Target and get this. Everybody thought this would be useful for their college dorm, but what they actually need is just some liquor. I am pleasantly surprised that this is only 11 bucks. I love when cooking equipment is cheaper than recipe books. So let's start with the simplest waffle batter recipe, consisting of one egg, a cup of milk that I got for myself, a tablespoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, quarter cup of oil, splash of vanilla. Now to the wet ingredients, we'll add the white ingredients, which is just a cup of flour and a key bump of baking powder. As we learned from the pancake video by Tasty, fluffiness come from an undermixed batter. So we'll let it completely hydrate by resting it for 15 minutes in the bowl. So I learned that string cheese is just low moisture mozzarella. I wonder how they make it low moisture though. Do they dry age or something? We'll stick it all the way in and start dipping them into the batter. I also plugged in the waffle maker in advance because it needs 10 to 15 minutes of heating time. You gotta organize your counter space before dipping. Give the inside a spray of oil, can start cooking them. It kinda looks like a really tiny corn dog. In about 3 to 5 minutes, the waffle should be done. And the cheese should be a little bit caramelized too. This is my first time using one of these waffle machines. I didn't know they're non-stick like that. Let's make one with double the batter. It's gonna look a lot more satisfying. And finally, let's make a real waffle. I don't know how those chocolate chips got there. Once the waffles are done, we'll put the machine away. And as a rule of the universe, after you use this machine once, it will disappear forever from the face of the earth until you have to move. And then you're gonna have the debate of whether to keep it or not. Look how cute this little waffle lollipop is. I think it looks pretty close to the original too. So let's pull it apart and admire the cheese pull. I think it's gotten cold. Maybe this bigger piece will be better. I think we have a little bit of pull going on here. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. It doesn't taste as good as it looks, so I'm gonna smother it in maple syrup as waffles are created with those little gaps to catch the syrup. But after all, I think we all learned a lesson. Okay, this is silly. Um, but if you want something that's similar to this, but actually good, Wisconsin bread cheese, okay, is amazing, okay? I discovered it recently, I've never had it before. Um, my lo one of my local grocery stores started carrying it. And I was like, I want to try this. So I got it. And it, you basically can just take it, and toss it into a, a pan and saute it. And it gets super crispy on the edges and really uh, squishy and squeaky. And it's a very, very delicious cheese. And it is amazing with something sweet especially in my opinion maple syrup it's it doesn't melt so it doesn't become all stringy but it gets stretchy and 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 gooey without being like completely melted and you can take it one by one and dip it into a little bit of maple syrup and it is absolutely delicious it's actually amazing and yes it is good with coffee it's very good with coffee as well um it's really good let me see if i can show you a picture of the bread cheese it's so fucking good. Yeah, here's the stuff. This is actually the same brand that I got too, actually. Oh, why does it gotta do it? Why does it gotta be like that? Come on, let me let me have the full picture, okay? Here we go. This is what it looks like, all right? It's really good, okay? Look at that. So this is what the cheese comes, this is the package the cheese comes in and you, I, the way I do it is I cut it into little cubes and then I toss it into a pan and with a tiny, tiny bit, little bit of oil, just enough to grease the pan and then you let it move, you just keep it sauteing, let it get nice and crispy, flip them over, get it nice and crispy on either side and then take it out, dip it in something sweet and it is like super cheesy, super savory amazing it's really good in maple syrup like i think it's incredible in maple syrup 
Way better than whatever this stuff is. Anyway, let's continue. It's definitely a cheese that goes well with sweetness. It is a very, uh, I don't know what it is, what, what the, the character of the cheese is that makes it so good with the sweetness. It's like, it's just, um, it's not like, it doesn't have that like sharpness of a cheddar. It's very soft cheese, but it has a strong flavor that the, the sweetness makes it contrast beautifully. Today, that a waffle right, with see. chocolate chips tastes better than a waffle with cheese. In case you didn't know that already. Speaking of stating the obvious, did you know that you can be better helped by using better help? Who's our sponsor? Fuck off. I can't stand better help ads. Better help. Ugh. Boo. Fuck better help some rice. You ever wonder what to do with this leftover white rice? Worry no more because we're going to make some pan seared mozzarella rice balls. So we'll dip our hands in some water to prevent sticking and just enclose pieces of mozzarella with the rice. As you can see here, I'm having a lot of trouble because there's too much moisture in the cheese. The rice is sticking. Have you tried smaller pieces of cheese? Why does the ball need to be oh, rage bait? I have to remember rage bait. See, this is the thing I hate about rage bait. The thing about rage bait is that you always you tr if you try to engage with it genuinely, then you just will get you'll get angry because you can't. You have to just go, "Oh, they're just trying to make me mad." You know? I don't know. I hate that. It's so I'm not laughing at it. I'll finish the video because people told me to. More to my hands than to each other, so we're gonna have to change strategy. When in doubt, I can always rely on my never-ending raclette. We're gonna cut into small pieces and wrap it up like before. These rice balls are like a popular school lunch that Japanese moms make for their children. It's kind of like a struggle meal, but at least it's better than the PB&J I've been eating. So we'll shape it into a little circle like this and move on to the stove. With your both sides, you don't have to worry about the color too much. Cause we're gonna brush on the chashu braising liquid from the ramen video. What? Nope. Rage bait. It's rage bait. I'm done. Alright, we're done. I'm done with this. There's nothing entertaining about this. Uh, I'm sorry. I am judging you all. This fucking sucks. It's time to go on to something else. I have videos that we can actually watch here. Oh, wait. The next recommendation in the queue is another Future Canoe video. Not happening. Then we got King Cobra JFS. Sorry. Can't do King Cobra tonight. We've already done that. Uh, good cooking. I don't want to watch that right now. I don't feel like that. All right, let's check this one. This one looks uh, like something. All right, let's try it. Let's try it. She's mad. I'm not, look, what am I supposed to do, okay? Can you tell me if I get mad at a guy who's intentionally trying to make you mad because he's like, oops, uh, hold on. I got the dog shit out of my closet. <laughs> It doesn't make me laugh. Like, it's not funny to reach into your closet and have, like, a moldy piece of shit that you put onto your food and then you pretend you're cooking something. It's just like, I don't know. It seems to me like... It, okay. If you like it, you like it. Good for you. It's... I just... I don't get it. Let's continue. Okay, we're gonna make some Ritz cracker toffee. So we're gonna take our Ritz crackers, put them down in a dish, and we've got the parchment paper laid down. This is, Why I is believe, like... a nine by nine dish. Oh, okay. Why is, it, why is it displaying like this? I can't see the whole video. Oh, it's fucking, it's messed up. Why is it like that? There we go. Okay, we're gonna make some Ritz crack. Oh, is it glitching? What the fuck is going on here? All right, whatever. Cracker toffee. So we're gonna take our Ritz crackers, 
put them down in a dish. And we've got okay, the okay. I can now see the edge of the video, so it should be fine. Lay down. This is, I believe, a nine by nine dish. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was an eight by eight. Could be eight by eight. It's eight by eight or nine by nine. And I'm doing it where the salted is on the top. Okay. I don't know that that matters, but I thought I would throw that in there. Okay, we got 16 bit in this eight by eight, nine by nine pan. Now we're gonna make our toffee. Stick of unsalted butter. We're gonna melt it first. Then we'll add in our brown sugar. Okay, now we're gonna take a half a cup of brown sugar. A lot and, of butter. Uh, this one is dark brown sugar. It doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. Is that a half a cup? That looks, that looks bigger than a half a cup, but all right. I'm gonna cook this for about three minutes. Looking good. Okay, now we're going okay. to take it and pour it over our crackers. Excuse me, Lemon. Please. Ooh, that's all dangerous. Right. Okay, now we've got Oh, that, that, that makes me, okay, can I just say something that like, I don't wanna be a killjoy, okay, but Stepping over your dog with boiling caramelized sugar is a terribly bad thing to do. That is genuinely extremely irresponsible. Like, do you know how bad, just how bad that could go? And what the consequences would be if it happened? That is... That's like like lifting a pot of boiling oil over your toddler. Okay? That's bad. Emilia Four says, sure, but I don't think non-vegans have any room to complain. You... <laughs> Yeah, non-vegans shouldn't want to uh, want to give their dog like fourth degree burns and also have to cut all the hair off of their long haired dog because they, all right, get the fuck out of here. Oh my God, you've gotta be, please tell me you're not being, I know wait, you're what, oh wow, that is, thank you for actually making me laugh, but that is, genuinely oh no oh oh no you can't be serious you can't you can't be serious I feel like they were trolling. I am not sure. I'm gonna pour it over. Ooh, look at that buttery goodness. Yeah. And your Ritz crackers are already better, buttery as well. I can't tell if it's a, I think it's an, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a deep, a deep bit. I think they were trying to rage bait me, but instead when I laughed, it didn't quite work. Ain't that the truth. Okay. <clears throat> For a spatula. Let me see where it's already getting hardened in there. I spread it out. Oh, I don't know, everybody. Remember, it's hypocritical. If you're not a vegan, it's hypocritical of you to not torture every animal and human, in fact, that you see, actually. You're a hypocrite. And I have a coherent worldview, and I'm making my point very well. If you don't literally see every, every living being that's in front of you, if you don't, like, pull them apart, like, string by string, unraveling them, you're, you're actually a hypocrite, actually. And then we're gonna bake this. Okay, so I know, I think I know what this, 
Um, I, I think I know what this recipe is. There is a recipe um, that even my mom used to make that was for like homemade low budget Heath bars. And what you use is you use saltines and you melt caramel and chocolate over the um, over the, a base of saltine crackers. And they're actually they're actually really good. Um, they're very simple. It's a very simple recipe. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. So, but, uh, but those are good. This seems very similar. This seems, this seems similar. What kind of Midwestern fuckery? Well, it's actually, it's really simple if you think about it. In fact, it's the basic, um, it's the basic recipe for the Heath candy bar is they use a salty, um, cracker of some type and then there's sugary stuff on top of it. I think the Heath candy bar has uh, caramel, nougat, and then chocolate or something along those lines. Um, yeah, but uh, but but the the they're the, it's they're pretty good. Like it's a very simple dessert, but it's a good dessert, and they're especially good when they're a little bit chilled because they have like a like a bite to them and a chewiness. Uh, but the saltiness goes really well with the caramel and with the chocolate, but so far this isn't so bad. Nougat, whatever, whatever, shut the fuck up. What's, what, what the fuck is, what the fuck is up? What temperature is it? 420, 425. 425. For how long? Five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Oh, that's bobbling hot. Oh, yeah, it is. You need to get a better. No, I got it. Look at that. So now. That's bubbling. Okay, now I've got a cup of chocolate chips. You're going to sprinkle them over your okay. crackers and your... Okay, so this is basically the same recipe, except the rich crackers do not lay side by side well. The whole thing about the, the saltines is that they're squares. So you can make a, 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 a sheet on the bottom that you get a layer. These are all fucked up, but I don't know. But I mean, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. Like rich crackers are buttery and salty. So it doesn't look great so far, but I bet it will taste great. Let's, let's see how it turns out. Topping. Put it back in the oven for one to two minutes. Just stay real close with it. Just one to two minutes, folks. The oven is hot and it's not gonna take long. All right. right, we did about one and a half minute. Now we're gonna take it over, have you a spatula out. And you should be able to, yeah, see? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Spray yeah see? Like All right. This is going to turn out just fine. You know, the parchment paper kind of gets in the way. But you want this parchment paper on here. You will learn in a minute. Oh, that's spreading on there real nice. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the reason they're doing this on parchment paper is because if you do it on anything else, it will literally be completely stuck to it. Uh, uh, you need the wax paper to, like, be able to break it off. Because it will come out in like a sheet, and then you can break it up into basically you could break it up into little candy bars or little chocolate chunks. I, I think I actually think this looks really good. Yeah, this looks really good. You really could make it a different um, flavor if you wanted to. If you don't want chocolate, you know the now they make the peanut butter chips. Oh yeah, they make all kinds of chips now. Do white chocolate. Um, get that snow, that Christmas look. I think yeah. Okay, now, got all of it spread out. We're gonna take some crushed up candy canes. Oh, okay. Crushed them up myself. Yes. All right, all right. I'm just gonna spread. Ah, I see what they're doing. Take a lid over here. Oh, that's cool. That Now it feels like Christmas. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And cool. And then you can pick it up with your parchment paper and break it. Is this good, right, Cooking Mama? Yeah, yeah. 
Break off a piece. That's how it works, right? Okay, so they, they did a time skip. Now it's cooled, and now you guys will see what it looks like when it's cooled. See, it, this recipe requires the cooling phase because it will all gum together into a layered, chewy treat, and it is really good, okay? Like I said, my mom used to make these. You know, I'm an enjoyer of uh, so-called poverty food, and this is definitely poverty food, and it's good as fuck. Yep. It's called that crack. Mmm. Ooh, look at, look that. at that. Wow. Man, that looks good. Oh my gosh. I yeah, see I why they call good. it that. I know you can't you can't put it down. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I bet that's great. I bet this is so rich and buttery. It's also like 2,000 calories to eat a single piece of this because it's made with an entire stick of butter and with Ritz and with chocolate. But who fucking cares? It's Christmas. That really is good. Make some pretzel M&M kisses on a parchment paper with the Oh, meat. these are so, these are so, the, I know what this is. These are just fine. These are, this is a classic. This is a classic like a uh, Christmas party treat. These are super, I can, I can, I, we know this one. This is fine. All right, let's give let's see what their chocolate marshmallow thing is. So far, these are just great. Start with a stick of butter and one and a half cups of sugar. We're gonna cream that together for about three minutes. We got that somewhat creamed together. There we go. All right. Next, we're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla. Mmm. Mm. And we're going to add two large eggs to the mix. Uno and dos. And then we're going to mix all that together. All right, got that all good mixed together. All right, we'll put that aside. We're going to do a little dry mixture here. We're going to start with two cups of all-purpose flour. Okay. And we're gonna do two thirds cups of cocoa powder. A lot of cocoa powder. Put that in there. We're gonna do one teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon of baking soda mm. right there. And then Mother Mere set with the two dollars says really these people seem really wholesome and adorable. Yeah, these these are fine. This stuff looks good. Half, I'm not gonna lie. A pinch. Yeah, a little half teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna mix that those dry ingredients together. That's good. Now once we have those mixed together, we're gonna bring this back and we're gonna dump this in with the wet mixture. Okay. All right. And we're gonna mix all that together that pretty good mixed together so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a tablespoon a little kind of tablespoon size ball we're going to put it on this uh parchment paper on this big baking sheet here down on there all right so we're going to take this over to the oven we have it at 350 we're going to put it in there for eight minutes we got to do the next step eight minutes y'all all right, while that's in the oven, we're going to take some marshmallows. We have 12 cookies, so we're going to take six marshmallows. We're going to cut them in half. Okay. All right. Looking nice and fluffy. Look at those. They're going to go right back in, but we got to add another step. Rock. Okay. All right, so we have those marshmallow halves that we had cut in half. We're gonna put one on top of each cookie. Oh, mm -hmm. shizzle. Oh, don't burn your fingers. There. Oh, it smells really good. All right, so we're gonna take it back to the oven. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put it back in there for just two minutes. Okay. So keep your eye on it, don't, don't wander away. Two minutes and then you'll take it back out. Okay. All righty. So we got the marshmallows nice and softened on there. I bet these are gonna be so great. Take this over here. We're gonna do one little step. We're just gonna flatten the marshmallow a little bit on each one. 
so it kind of covers the cookie. <gasps> These right. are cute. So we put this to the side. Oh, that was a little loud. Frosting. Okay. All right, so we got some softened butter to make the frosting with. Wow. And we'll turn that for just one minute. <laughs> All right, then we're going to take two tablespoons of cocoa powder, add that to it. These are gonna, these are cute. We're also going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Dump that in there. We're also going to do. We got some whole milk. We're going to do one and a half tablespoons ish of whole milk. I always spill when I'm trying to do it this way. See, there we go. Oh, I'm so hungry for sweets right now. And a half. There we go. Boom. And then finally, we're going to take half this bag of powdered sugar. We're doing about two cups worth of powdered sugar. All right, once we have all that in there, we're going to cream that all together to make a nice icing. Okay. All right, now that the icing's ready, we just gotta let those cookies cool and we're gonna put this on there. All right, now that we got the frosting ready and the cookies are cooled down, we're gonna put some frosting over the top of each one. What, this is cute. Oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> These are gonna be delicious. What the hell? You can't have this chocolate though. You can't, Brandon, it's not good for you, not good for your health. All right, and the last one. Hmm. Man, these are looking. Can't They're looking put, good. I can't wait to put this in my mouth. I like that little cream pie. Mm hmm Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Let's get a look at that. How did it end up that most of what we watched today was fine and the end was actually good? I hear that there's another... Gordon Ramsay uh, cheese, uh, grilled cheese out there. And we haven't seen the part two. Maybe we'll end with that one. So it's a solid Cooking Mama episode. Mm. <clears throat> Let's see, What's, where's the lucky one right here? That middle one looks good. Yeah, okay, let's go that if anybody has the second Gordon Ramsay grilled cheese, then I'd like to, uh, somebody get me the link. Because I've seen the first one. We've seen the first one like three times on stream. But I want to see the second one. I don't know where to find it. Oh my god. That was actual Wednesday. So good. Merry Christmas. Damn. Wait, that was good. That was good. All right, let me see if I can find it. Wait, this is it? All right. Oh, hell yeah. All right, we'll wrap it off with something. Gordon Ramsay makes a grilled cheese sandwich again. All right. Let's do it. Right, now, uh, welcome. Uh, met, I should explain. Many of you will know Gordon Ramsay had an infamously bad grilled cheese sandwich that we have reacted to on this stream multiple times, okay? This time, we are going to find out whether he can save the day and his reputation by making a grilled cheese sandwich. The first one was an atrocity. It was a total failure. The cheese wasn't even melted. It was burned to hell. You could see it burning. He lies directly into the camera. He literally tells you, look at how nice and melted that is when you can see the cheese has not even begun to melt. He just lies right into the camera. Like the most gaslighty thing that Gordon Ramsay has ever done, okay? So let's find out if this one is better. Okay, let's do it. Let's find out. Welcome to my redemption cook-off. I'll tell you why, because a few years back I was in Tasmania making the most extraordinary grilled cheese. That's incredible. Look at that. 
Oh, now, there he is. I was up against it. Didn't have much time. Not making any complaints. However, this is redemption. Because now, in front of my amazing audience, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make the most perfect grilled cheese. You guys ready? Yeah! Okay, let's go. So I've got some great Italian country bread. In between, I've got some... Mm, okay, all right, okay. Amazing mushrooms, braised short rib. I'm gonna make an amazing little jalapeno jam. Start off with first, cooking Wait. the mushrooms. W w hold on a second. Keep it fucking simple, man. The last one you tried to do was an overambitious bungle that had ingredients that had no business being in there. Why can't you just make a normal grilled cheese sandwich? Grilled cheese is amazing. They are d delicious and reliable. Why you have to have braised beef, nine different vegetables, a mushroom, uh, 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 somebody's fucking firstborn child. What the hell's going on here? This is a melt already. And look, I'm not completely against, you know, melts that are still considered grilled cheese. But we're pushing it here. That's a lot of ingredients already. And I think we're leaving the grilled cheese category when it's no longer a grilled cheese, but instead is a grilled sandwich with cheese and braised beef and onions, tomatoes, uh, mushrooms, uh, and garlic and, and all these other things. All right, but we'll give him a chance, okay? We'll give him a chance. Now, when I say I've taken flack, you have no idea the amount of complaints I've had globally about this grilled cheese. However... Okay, already, I'm already concerned, okay? These are really thick mushroom slices, and these mushrooms are gonna absorb a lot of the heat necessary to make a grilled cheese a grilled cheese. I'm worried already. Now, we are back with a vengeance. Olive oil into our pan. Okay, and let's get some color on those mushrooms. No color, no flavor. Nice hot pan, mushrooms in, and lay them flat in the pan so we get that really nice color on there. Salt, chili flakes, and then just a little touch of olive oil again. Get them roasting. Bro, Damn. that is not a little touch. That's a lot of oil. Oh boy. This jam, this is a jalapeno and sort of tomato jam. Fry off the peppers, slice them nice and thin. I'm the type of person that loves the seeds in these things, okay? It generates more heat. And more importantly, at this age, they're not really that hot, okay? And I want this thing caramelizing. So, slice them into little rondels. Touch of olive oil into the pan. And in we go. Now, again, some salt, and then a little touch Bro, of pepper. Bro, we already salted those. Wait. Important, especially, again, some salt, and then. Wait, he salted the, he just, he just salted the mushrooms again. Oh, dude, he accidentally salt, salted the mushrooms again. He already salted them once. What the fuck is going on here? Is this intentional? Is he trolling? Was it a viral success? And so his corporate, uh, d d like his corporate owner or whatever made him say, you must fuck up a grilled cheese again. A little touch of pepper, really important, especially cooking mushrooms. And then inside a this jam, a little pinch of sugar. In we go. Now, the ginger, just cut that in half, nice and fine. I quite like the chunks of ginger in there as well. As the ginger starts to cook, it's gonna dis- I'm sorry, sorry, hold on a second. We're getting fucking trolled. We're getting trolled. He is gaslighting us, listen to this. Now, the ginger, just cut that in half. Nice and fine. Nice and fine? This is not, hold on, what's he say after that? I quite like the chunks. I quite like the chunks of ginger in there as well. This is, we're being trolled. We're being trolled. This is, are we getting rage baited again? I feel like I'm getting rage baited. He's saying that it's fine immediately after acknowledging that it's chunks. And also, what the fuck? 
I have never heard of anybody enjoying chunks of ginger. Ginger is best when it's fine. Chunks of ginger have like a woody consistency. What the fuck is going on? Well, as the ginger starts to cook, it's going to disintegrate and sort of really give a little touch of spice inside that jam. From there, my tomatoes. Just get the tomatoes and literally just cut them in half. And we're sort of going to blister the tomatoes. This is a unique sandwich because in the center, I've got some leftover braised short rib. So that's going to give a really amazing texture inside. And then from there, just start your shallots. Nice and fine. Start that jam. Beautiful. Get them sauteing beautifully. Make sure we get a lot of color on those mushrooms, OK? We need the color. We need the water to come out of that beautiful mushroom so this grilled cheese remains nice and caramelized. And I promise you this time, that cheese is going to be melted beyond belief. Just a little touch of honey over that chutney. And now it's going to start caramelizing. Now, for the center. This is my braised short rib, OK? And this is literally left over from the night before. Uh, he, I, feel like, I feel like we're being actively trolled. And all we're going to do now is just sort of slice the short rib down into layers. Give that a really nice season. And from there, chill it so it stays nice and firm. Why? W just w why? Why wouldn't you shred it? Not, not only that, but hold on a second. There's a... I'm, there's a lot of pieces of fat in here that I'm just going to be honest. I don't think that those are going to make for a nice texture inside of a sandwich. I feel like you're going to bite into that and you're going to get a grisly, you know, that nasty feeling when you're biting a piece and you get the tough piece of meat in there. Why is this? What the fuck is going on here? What am I witnessing? Of course, fat is good, but the pockets of grizzly fat. This was this is the perfect opportunity to turn your 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 meat here. Just pull it, just shred it, make it into shredded things that will goop up with the cheese. You guys ever had like a pulled pork sandwich with some melted cheese on it or something? What the hell is going on? And from there, chill it so it stays nice. He's cutting it like spam. Um, so good. So good. Tom Brady, I hope you're watching. I'll stop it, Tom. Come on. You're going to make a grilled cheese? Yeah, just make a grilled cheese. Tom. It's not that hard. What's secret? I think Nick made it. Tom Brady, come on. Ready? Grilled cheese? Ser uh, this is, this is yucky. This is celebrity crossover sellout bullshit. This is yucky. Seriously? Mushrooms getting cooked down. Chutney coming together. That comes out into our bowl. Chutney done. And then look at these mushrooms. Beautiful. Drain off the fat. In and out. Beautiful. Now for the bread. Pan nice and hot. Get your country bread and literally lather with mayonnaise. And into the pan we okay, go. Okay, that I agree with. I, I have been completely sold on the mayonnaise as the grilled cheese uh, lubricant, I I do think it's the best way. I used to be a butter fan, but I've really been sold on the mayo. The mayo makes the edges so crispy. It's really, it's really magical. That's it. Again, both sides on. And just get your press and lightly press down. And that's the beauty of these pans. Is this a Mainer thing? No, it's not. Because, uh, absolutely not. In fact, the first person who convinced me to use the mayo on a grilled cheese was dough. And it actually is amazing. So it's not a Mainer thing. In fact, I don't know anybody in Maine who would use mayo. But it makes sense if you think about it. Mayo is, uh, it is fat and 
it's it's fat. It's a bunch of fat with eggs, and so the eggs crisp really nicely. Yeah, it's it's it works really really well, but if you don't like mayo, you're not gonna like it. But but I love mayo. I think mayo is delicious, and especially as a especially to crisp up the edges. It, it's just great, in my opinion. Oh, we lovely, beautifully caramelized that bread. Don't forget to season the bread, okay? Both sides. A bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. That's what we want, beautiful color. And then on that side, look, I'm gonna start just lightly seasoning that with a little touch of chili flake, okay? Now, for the exciting part, I've got my Gria, my cheddar and taleggio, three great cheeses that's gonna beautifully melt. We're gonna start layering this thing up beautifully. You guys ready? Yes. Let's go. Right, first off, a generous sprinkling of the Gria cheese. Both sides. Get your mushrooms and literally form a base of these mushrooms underneath. Just push them down in that cheese, okay? Lightly. Yeah, I'm just gonna be honest. This isn't a grilled cheese sandwich. This is a melt. Like, there is way too much in there for this to be even considered a grilled cheese sandwich. So he's already failed on that front. Season. Each layer, absolutely crucial to season. And then from there- They're already seasoned. This is over seasoned. I'm sorry. Look, uh, that's too much. You've done it. The mushrooms have been salted two times. The bread was salted. The bread was chili flaked. I could understand it if there was some other seasoning in here, but it's just salt and pepper. He's been salting and peppering everything. The chutney was super salted and peppered and red chili flakes. Dude, come on. Take your short rib. Short rib sits on top. Again, short rib, cheese, and then we're gonna go for that beautiful chutney. Jalapeno chutney. And <laughs> ow, ow, oh, ow. Oh, that was a painful sneeze. I hate it when you get a sneeze that hurts. Ow, that one hurt. It was in a, like an abortive sneeze too. God damn. That just lifts the beef up beautifully. Oh. And jalapeno. Now for our mature cheddar, okay? Sharp cheddar first on top. Again, really important we season. Really important. My chile. For my the cheese, too. So we're seasoning the cheese, too? Chutney. Oh, my goodness me. And then from there, a touch more cheese. Now, on and on. This is the grilled cheese, by the way. Dude, shut the fuck up. The, no. Fucking no. And then finally, close that over. We press that down and we pray, right? That goes in. Oh my goodness me. A bit of oil, a touch of butter. And but in. Wh but why? Now, we take no. our prayer. Okay, but why? But fucking why? But you already toasted the bread. So it, so what, so what is going on? This is, an, and yes, no, I 100% agree with everyone saying that this is not, this is no longer a grilled cheese. I can understand a grilled cheese that has mushrooms in it. I can understand a grilled cheese that has a little bit of bacon in it, okay? but you leave the category of grilled cheese once you have jalapenos, tomatoes, pep uh, jalapeno peppers, tomatoes, onions, no, sh sorry, shallots, chunks of ginger, giant pieces of spare rib, or whatever it is, rib tips. And yeah, I guess that's all of it. I think I hit it all, uh, and mushrooms, I forgot, and mushrooms. So, that's too much, okay? This is way too much. Yes, and we push down. 
and then very quickly, four minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. That's you cheating, you idiot! The point of a... You... What the fuck are you doing? What are you... Okay, this is rage bait. There's no way this is real. I know I'm getting baited by rage bait. You just filled the pan with oil and started it bubbling, and now you're putting the whole thing in the oven? Why? The point of a fucking grilled cheese is that you melt the cheese while toasting the bread, so you get a nice, even, crispy, goopy, delicious thing. What is this fucking shit? What is this fucking... He's fucking gentrifying the goddamn grilled cheese. So am I. The moment of truth. Here we go. Oh. More like the moment of shit. Oh my goodness me. Come on, Tom, look closely. Nick. Wait, he lost. Wait, hold on. What? Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Where'd the thing that was on top of it go? Did he take that away or Four something? Minutes in the oven. Where'd the, where'd the panini press go? Degrees. You guys excited? <laughs> so Whoa! We got a cheater! We got a fucking cheater here! He definitely just put the panini press in! Am I the moment of truth? Here we go. Oh my goodness me. Come on, Tom, look closely. Nick, look even closer. Also, the cheese is flowing out all over the pan. What is this shit? It's a soup. The, the fucking thing on the bottom, the piece of bread on the bottom is going to be soggy. Let's get this out. Lift that up. Oh my goodness me. On. And you didn't even make enough to share with everybody. Oh my goodness me. And here we are. A beautiful, amazing grilled cheese with shore rib. Whoa! Hold on a second, bro. We got a problem. Grilled cheese with shore rib. What is this right here? You got unmelted cheese pieces, bro. You got unmelted cheese right there. You fucking idiot. You clown. This is 100%. We are being rage baited. That's right, right there. Unmelted cheese. He did it intentionally. And he's lying to us again. This is why I have to assume that this was manufactured. He was told intentionally you need to screw up the grilled cheese again. There's no way he does this twice. God, that is absolutely infuriating. Grilled cheese with shore rib. <laughs> Finally, my cheese has melted. Take that, Tom Brady. No, my man. No, dude. It's the proof is in the goddamn video. The proof is in the goddamn video. My God. Danny Fallen says this was made for his hex clad YouTube. This is either rage bait or real proof that Ramsey just isn't a chef anymore and is purely a restaurateur. I am... I am stunned. It's just... That's depressing. Uh oh, look at the chat. Look at look at the comments. Gordon Ramsay intentionally fucks up a grilled cheese again to make sure the meme continues to live on. Man knows how to internet. That's a good looking short rib sandwich, not a grilled cheese. I disagree. Forever love this man's inability to just make a grilled cheese. 
Oh, he totally did it. Makes a short rib melt. All the cheese isn't melted. Calls it a grilled cheese. Bravo. This is incredible. Didn't know a professional chef was capable of messing up a grilled cheese twice. Yeah, he's trolling. I think he's trolling us, thinking he'll never actually make it. He'll he'll ever make an actual grilled cheese. Zero v two versus grilled cheese. He's just doing this on purpose. On purpose. Yeah, I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree, and I failed, because I should have just tuned out. I should have not given him my time. He definitely messed it up on intentionally. I believe the first one was a genuine, like, was genuinely like a production schedule thing, but this is way too performative, and he made way too many obvious mistakes. You know, if he just, if he just made a goddamn grilled cheese, it would be fine. But it's got to be trolling. Anyway. I hope you all have enjoyed the Cooking Mama segment. We've done a lot of cooking tonight. We saw some good stuff. We saw some bad stuff. We saw some stuff that surprised us. And we all got yelled at in a very strange way by a strange vegan again. Seems to be a constant and recurring issue. I hope you enjoyed this extended, long Cooking Mama segment. 